Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the queen of having it both ways. I keep hearing and reading that many Republican leaders want to move on from Donald Trump. I can't imagine why. His role in a riot that could have gotten some of them killed. His masterful design of their midterm debacle. The possibility he'll be indicted any day now. They've had enough, or so they keep signaling and whispering. And then they go and choose Sarah Huckabee Sanders to deliver the party's official response to President Biden's State of the Union address. Yeah, yeah, she's young, she's a working mom, she's the first female governor of Arkansas, where she's not yet through her first month in office. All of that says fresh start. But nothing else about her does, not if you have a memory and a moral code. She spent nearly two years as Trump's press secretary, the central figure in excusing his outrages and laundering his lies. She spent much of her campaign for governor invoking his name, appearing with him, even sending money his way, for the catering of fundraisers for her at Mar-a-Lago. Trump was her cause and then Trump was her springboard, and that's what's so fascinating about where she is now and what she's being asked to do. She's supposed to carry Republicans beyond Trump when she so carefully carries Trump inside her. It's ludicrous. It's perfect. It's what makes her such a fitting mascot for a party that won't come clean about the compromises it has made, the values it has trashed and the madness it has abetted. She's a brazen, shameless mascot, to boot. On Tuesday night, in televised remarks that began about half an hour after Biden's ended, she referred at least three times, by my count, to Biden, his administration or their supporters as, crazy. Not just wrong-headed, crazy. The choice is between normal and crazy, she said, distinguishing Republicans from Democrats. This from a woman who worked for Trump, on behalf of a party whose leaders coddle the likes of Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and now talk about the January 6th riot as if it were no more sinister than a fraternity party with a keg too many. Sanders eagerly joined the culture wars, heavily armed with the favored ammunition, woke, indoctrinate, critical race theory. But she also sought to soften that assault with frequent references to being a mom, repeated invocations of her three children and multiple calls for a new generation of leadership. A folksy battering ram, that's what she was. In other words, her usual oxymoronic self. Her big night won't necessarily be a big prize. Giving the rebuttal to a State of the Union address hasn't lifted those who've done it over recent years to the higher offices that many of them sought or dreamed about. I refer you to Bobby Jindal to Marco Rubio. To Stacey Abrams. Doing this is a high-wire act for a brand new governor, I think that takes a lot of guts, Russ Schrieffer, a Republican strategist who served as the principal media consultant for the 2014 and 2018 campaigns of Sanders' predecessor as Arkansas governor, Asa Hutchinson, told me. There are plenty of people who were more seasoned than she is and failed. I've been on phone calls with people who have been asked to do this and they've turned it down, just for this reason. I wager that her performance will go down as adequate an efficiently rendered but less than stirring distillation of Republicans' current case against Democrats. Regardless, the assignment flattered her. It established that she had her party's seal of approval and was considered a rising star. Good things happen to people who make bad, unethical choices, said Tim Miller, a former spokesman for Jeb Bush and the author of the recent bestseller, Why We Did It, a travelogue from the Republican Road to Hell. It sucks been cultivating a practice of acceptance in yoga. What is Sanders cultivating? Her age, she's just 40, and her newness in office mean that she's not among those Republicans who might offer themselves up as alternatives to Trump for their party's 2024 presidential nomination. But 2028? 2032? Wholly conceivable. Maybe even likely and certainly not what most people envisioned back when she was furiously wrapping the knuckles of White House journalists on television every afternoon and trying to vaporize the CNN reporter Jim Acosta with her death glare. As Trump's mouthpiece, she put on a fiery performance for a combustible boss. She served faithfully. Schrieffer pointed to a similar balancing act. Republicans who support Trump can like her, he said, but Republicans who support DeSantis can like her. 
Does that add up to universal likability? Or rank opportunism? In going with the latter, especially in light of her answer, during her primary in Arkansas last year, to the question of whether she believed the 2020 presidential election was stolen. I don't think we'll ever know the depths of how much fraud existed, she said, according to the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, adding, we know there is fraud in every election. How far and wide it went, I don't think that will be something that will be ever determined. How mushy. How weaselly. She knows better, and it turns out there's one box she hasn't checked, integrity. Thank you.